Just before we came into service, I was, I was talking to uh, the, uh, the uh, bishop, uh, apostle, that um, every day you wake up in the morning to go out, you are a chef. Amen. Anybody you meet, even if it's for one minute, when you leave the person, you serve the person a meal. Mm. Mm. Yes. Follow me? Yeah. And so, they are feeling about the deliciousness of your meal is dependent on your expertise and the value of cookery skills you have. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So basically, many people spend all day, and when they get back home, they've, they've poisoned 20 people. Mm. <laughs> Poison in the spirit. Mm. Amen. Oh, yeah. Everybody you meet, you serve a meal. Now the beautiful thing about cooking is that your first meal is always tricky. Yeah. Especially when you go and read it online in the Google era. <laughs> when you Google, you have to mix five tablets of water and this amount of, 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 of rice for it to mix. Guess what? You can follow every instruction in a menu and the meal is still rubbish. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. That is the reason why what makes a meal better or good is actually practice and the quality of time you spend cooking the meal. So the more you cook, the better you get. You know, it comes to the point where you don't even have to look at the menu anymore. It gets to the point where you look at the food and the, the nature of the bubble of the soup tells you the level that the, the soup is ready for, to be served. Yeah. Yeah. Just seeing how the bubbling, that is how good you get the more you cook. Mm -hmm. Okay? I want to talk about something very important. I want to talk about movement. Movement. Did you realize that the human body has 360 joints? Think about that for a minute. So you count 100 then count 200, <laughs> then count 300, then add 60. That is the number of joints the human body has. The reason for a joint in the body is for movement. So anywhere there is a joint, that means by design, humans are designed to move. Did you realize that there's even joints in the skull? When the baby is born, the cranium is got about three, three joints. And at infancy, it's subtle, it's soft. And the reason is because even the skull understands by design that the brain of the baby needs to grow. Yeah. So the joints is structured such that it can expand with time. And it gets to the point where then the, when the brain is fully grown, then the sutures begin to fix in place. So you are designed to move. Mm. I almost cannot start any, any teaching. See, Dr. Nelly is smiling. There's a reason why she's smiling. She's smiling because she knows what I'm about to say next. Mm. I cannot start any teaching without Genesis. Because Genesis is the, is the beginning, how we began. Yeah. Let's open with me to the book of Genesis, please. <coughs> I want to just set a premise. Very quickly. Yeah. Chapter 1. I want to read from verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over every, uh, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, if you read from verse 1 of Genesis, okay, 
The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. By the way, I'm a teacher. So get your Bible ready. Lots of reading today, yeah? Amen. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 1. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. Those are three problems. God made the heavens and the earth. But the heavens was fine. But the Bible says the earth was without form. Yeah. It was void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. So these are three problems God needs to resolve. Okay? God is a God of solutions. Are you following me? So how did he get about resolving it? The first thing he does, verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. That solves problem one, the darkness over the face of the deep. Is that correct? Yeah. Beautiful. Now we have what's left, the void and the formlessness. So it begins with formlessness, because to fill a void, it needs a form. Okay? The reason this, 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 this space makes sense is because there are four walls. And so the space makes sense. So when you feel something in a space with structure, that's the form, then it's easy to understand when you move what you feel. If there's no four walls, you can't understand positioning. Okay? So fundamentally, formlessness should be fixed before you feel the void. Yeah. Okay? So God had to put form in this earth he created. And to put form, he started doing something very interesting. He started doing separations. I won't read now, but you can read later. The Bible says that first, the first thing he does is he separates light from darkness. He's like separating one half or one, one side or wall of the room from the other. Are you following me? So light from darkness. Then he separates the waters above the firmament from the waters beneath. So now we have the roof and the floor. Are you following me? Yeah. So it's, the room is beginning to take shape. Then he now separates the water from land. But then he does that, and each time he separates, he gives it a name. I call you day, I call you night, I call you land, I call you sea. Yeah. Friends, there is something about naming your current situations after a separation. And guess what? You cannot have form if you remain the way you were before. There has to be a separation for there to be form in your life. If you are doing the things you were doing before, when you, before you became born again, and you are still doing them, you are formless. Yeah. Now remember, when God made the heavens and the earth, there are two kinds of things happening here. Chapter 1 of Genesis is God creating in the spirit. That's why if you go to chapter 2 of Genesis, the Bible says, and God formed man from the dust of the ground, and man became a living soul. So there's a difference between the created man and the formed man. You follow me? Okay, there's a difference between the created man and the formed man. Yeah. So to have form in your life, there has to be separation. The things you used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. If you are still doing the thing you used to do, you are a formless earth. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, when there's a separation, then the space is created. Now, let me give you an idea of what that separation really was. It was God putting systems and processes in place. Scientists know and has proven that for the earth to sustain life, five things are fundamental. Is the reason why the earth sustains life. The first thing is the distance of the earth from the sun. There's a reason why the earth is the third planet. The earth could have been the first planet. I, I, I like telling a story of me walking into, it was a Sunday service back in the UK. And after Sunday service, I walked to go and pick up my kids. It was Sunday school. So you know how kids, when they will have a topic from the scriptures, they will make it graphical and paint pictures. Yeah. So I walked into this room, and on the wall, they were, they were talking about creation. That's, that was what they were talking about. So there was like paintings of day one, God made light. Day two, God made firmament. Day three, earth and seas. Day four, sun, moon, stars. I know because I even have a song for it. Yeah. Day five, living creatures. 
Then day six, he made man and other creepy things on, 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 the, on the land. So, but when I walked into the room that day, something strange happened. A spirit ministered to me, and it was a form of a question. And it was a very simple, almost useless question. And the question was, why didn't God make man in day two? Because if the Bible says that he spoke, let there be, and there was, let there be, and there was. It didn't matter when he made what? Am I making sense? Yes. The Bible didn't say he created one thing from the other. He spoke them all to be. Yeah. Let us make man and they make man. Are you following me? Yeah. So the question was, well, why did he make Adam in day two? Mm. Or make light in day four? The more I asked the question, the more he told me, look closer. The trouble is this, and I'll come to this in a minute. Many of us don't look closer. Mm. Mm. You rush out of school or out of the house to go to work. You work all day, you rush back home, and the only time you, you, you almost convince yourself by reading two, two verses and you say, I've read the Bible today. I've ticked the box. Yeah. Yeah. You work literally Monday to Friday. And each time you go to work, say you leave it's eight in the morning by five, you're finishing work or knocking off. You see as you get into traffic. You get home by eight. The kids are waiting for meal. You cook by ten, you are tired. You iron your clothes and then you go to sleep. By five in the morning, you are up. It's like a virtual circle, back to back. Are you following me? Even on the weekend, when you say, okay, well, I'm going to rest this weekend and catch up, it's a lie. Weekend is when you now remember, I have not greeted my cousin through the week. Yeah. Oh, my grandmother is coming now to ask to be cooked a meal for. So Saturday is gone. Yeah. And then Sunday you come to church, you say, well, after all, church service is just three hours. You focus three hours. God, I give you three hours. Lord, I give you three hours. Yeah. With all my soul, to make up for the whole week. Yeah. Lord, I give you three hours. Lord, I love you so much for these three hours. Lord, have mercy on me. Only these three hours is fine. Then by the first hour of the three hours, you start sleeping. Oh. <laughs> dedicated these three hours to the almighty lord this is your three hours by the first hour because now your, your body is now responding to the turmoil you put it through for five days yeah. then you finish then you tell yourself i've tried at least i've given god one and a half hours <laughs> in the three hours you go back home to do what start preparing school school kit meals it just continues now friends listen if the Bible says that God is a jealous God Amen. and you are allocating 5% because remember, if you take away sleeping time when well, you can't do anything, you, just, you are sleeping from your available time for the week you actually consume up to 75 to 80% of your available time working so you better be sure that God is in the work oh. Yeah, 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 oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Now, many of us now separate it in our mind. This mind is an incredible thing. And you're just about telling yourself, and then you reassure yourself until your mind accepts that it's true. But it's a pit from the depth of hell. Hear me now. You tell yourself, you separate yourself, I'm going to walk, and when I go to Sunday, those two and a half hours, I go to church. Friends. When God wants to create living things, he needed to give the earth form and fill the void. So I'm going back to the story. So why didn't God make man in day six or day four? Then the, then the voice said, look closer. That process is called consider. In, in Greek mythology, the, 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 the Greek word is considerer. What considerable means is an activity astrologers perform. So what they do is they go out into the open field, yeah? And they lie on their back and just look into the heavens. They will spend five hours, six hours, just looking into the skies. The more they look, they begin to see patterns and trends. That star wasn't there yesterday, now it's here. Yeah. Yeah. The distance between this star and that star increased in April and reduced in May. Mm -hmm. That process is called considerable. It's the root forward for consider. Yeah. 
So you cannot be growing and moving. Remember, you've got 360 joints. But the trouble is, 250 of your joints are stiff. Hey. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Are you me? Yes, sir. Because the more activity you prepare, I'll come to that in a minute. So what happens is that you are always in the hurry. What are you hurrying to? Then you come back to the same God you were hurrying away from. You come back on Sunday to ask him to give you things. Mm. You think every time my daughter says that, and I say, how are you, darling? And she goes, mm. and walks away. She happens the first day. Then second day, I want her attention. She goes, daddy, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up with you later. Mm. And walks away. Then a week after she's done that for me all week, she comes and says, hey, daddy. I mean, guess what? I need... Before she finished the knee, I will tell her. That's what the Bible says. Get close to me, and what? I will get close to you. God is a spirit. He doesn't understand it. God doesn't understand. Oh, God understands now. God to work today. No, no, no. If he gets, he wants to get his allocated time. Which is the reason why what you need to do is now, most of you are very innovative when it comes to doing other things. Eh? In your mind. If I ask you now, tell me your calendar for the week with which you are able to meet up home responsibilities, father responsibilities, and your boss responsibilities. You have it structured out. But you have not been able to structure out a supersonic innovative calendar that gets God in the middle of your business. What is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you have to be clever in, in, in unimportant things and what really matters to your soul? You become very innovative. No, no innovation. Oh, Lord. What's interesting in this? If I called you and said, okay, guess what? I will pay you, so I will pay you serious money. What might be the best amount of money to pay someone in a month where the person knows I've arrived? An example, in kwacha. 500,000. I will pay you 500,000 kwacha. Follow me? Yes. Under two conditions. The first condition is everything you are doing now, keep doing it. So don't stop anything. But then start doing all that things that shows to me you are serious about God. I will pay you 500,000 kwacha. Okay. Then you get innovative. Yes. The trouble is the same innovative that will make you innovative because I've offered you money is you've lost sight because of foolishness. And don't understand that when you get innovative about God. Hallelujah. Come on. Yeah. Your innovation that this child is interested in me, yes. God will give you a million kwacha yes. beyond what you would have done if somebody was paying you 500,000 kwacha just to do that same thing. Mm. So, your capacity to understand innovation in godly principles to give God the time He deserves mm. is the reason you are coming, you are still in your state. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People don't understand God is a spirit. When the Bible says that seek time and harvest shall not cease, it means when you sow, you will reap. Yes. At the end of the month, when they pay me 5,000 kwacha, or how much kwacha they paid me, I have reaped what I sowed. Mm. Have I not? Yeah. The good thing about God is when you sow by doing these things, what you've done basically is you've, get, you've, you've given God the freedom to pay you back as he wants. Mm. That I prefer. Yeah. At least for the human one, I know every month 5,000 kwacha hits my account. Yeah. The month it goes 5,000 kwacha by 5 kwacha above what I'm expecting. I'm in shock. But God, you can't quantify yeah. what your soul win because he has to confirm his word. He says, as long Sit time and harvest will not cease. Amen. So go back to the point. Now let me show you what God did. God is a God of design. I will, so 
It makes light in day one because it needed to resolve the darkness I showed you was a problem in the beginning. Yeah? yeah. So that makes sense. Because you can't see when there is no light. Exactly. So light was fundamental starter of this creation process. Yes. Then he makes commandment and begins to do separation to give it form. Follow me? Now when there is form, follow me, you can go and read it. When he separates the land from the sea, the Bible says that on that same third day, which when he separated the land from the sea, it was the same third day he made plants on the land. But remember, the sea was available. Because there had been separation. Yeah. But how come he only made plants on day three? So now I'm thinking with a scientist's mind, and I think, oh, what does plants need to grow? They need two main things. They need oxygen in the right proportion, yes. carbon dioxide. So that's okay because he made the firmament in day two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the compositions of the gases, nitrous acid, carbon dioxide, were in equal volume. And by the way, if you understand science, plants actually need carbon dioxide to, to survive. Yeah. It's not oxygen. So plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. So it made no sense to make other animals when there was no oxygen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Mm. It is us that take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. So the first thing you want to put on the planet is the thing that produces what his son will need later on. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. So, yes. now, plants also need light to photosynthesize. You understand that the plant doesn't need sun to photosynthesize. So in greenhouse gases, you can use just normal light and the plants will still grow yeah. without the sun. So, but that's fine because there was light in day one. Now, there was something that God had not made yet, which is the reason why even though the seas was now available in day three, it didn't make any sea animals or fishes yet. Mm. Nobody it was. Mm. What he made on day four. Mm. The sun, the moon, and the stars. Amen. Because the sun and the moon interaction is what causes the circulation of the ocean waters by the gravitational pull. Oh, yes, sir. oh wow. Yes. So there would be what you call nutrient circulation in the sea if there was no system to cause the separation. Oh, amen. So if you had made the fishes on day three, even though sea was available, that was bad design. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. 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 Are you following me? Yes. So in day four, he now meets the sun, moon, and stars. And they begin to have interaction with each other. And now the tide. Tide is because of the contractions on interaction of the sun and the moon. Mm. Everything I've told you today, you can Google it, to brother. <laughs> Before you say, Dr. Holden is just making things up. <laughs> say, you have Google your phone. <laughs> I am speaking proved evidential science. Amen. Yes. So, so now follow me. So he makes the sun and moon on day four, and then the system is in place. Are you following me? Yeah. Now with that in place, it's now okay to make the fishes of the sea on day five. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So he makes them on day five. Then he makes birds. Why do you think? Now listen very, very carefully. What do birds need to live? Oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. That is the reason why, even though the firmament where they fly was available on day two, because there was no plant yet to cause a circulation, yeah. it didn't make birds. Hallelujah. Wow. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, by day five, a few things were in place. The firmament, the bears would fly. And remember, part of why birds can fly is because the atmospheric pressure of the gases in the atmosphere is just right for their wings. Mm. So that was in place. 
Yeah. Then what else do birds need? They need plants. Yeah. So that when they're tired from flying back and forth, what do birds do? They find a tree to rest. Yeah. So everything was in place for him to make the birds and the five. Now friends, basically, God makes what you want and need before he makes you. That's true design. Mm -hmm. Now friends, listen. Do you think therefore that the God who spends this amount of time just to make the earth in its right precision and proportion ready for his son and his daughter, Adam and Eve, to be created, would now create Adam and Eve and leave them to live haphazard? No. The God with that kind of precision. Don't you wonder, I'm not speaking about that today, maybe another day I speak about the ark of God. The reason why even the ark of God, which was a representation of the second Adam, were all in precision. He would tell Moses, make it this cubit, that cubit. Go back and read Exodus. You start wondering, the way he's creating this wooden ark, pitched in gold, this God must be a carpenter. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> because he remembers his father's occupation. <laughs> but that requires a level of precision. Yes, sir. It's a God of precision. Yes. So God will make you and then allow the person he made to live a life that 80% of your time is away from him. There is something wrong with that design. Yes. Mm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. There's something wrong with that design. It makes no sense. It's not God's pattern. Are you following me? Now have that in mind. Most people don't realize that we are in a warfare. We're in a battle. And I'll show you in a minute. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. So friends, hear me very clearly. God is interested in what you do. And because of what you do should give him glory. And the only time, hear me now, the only time what you do can give God glory is because that thing you do, God put it in you to do it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'll paint in a picture so you understand what I'm talking about. If I'm the creator of a refrigerator and I send you a refrigerator as a birthday gift, okay? And so on your birthday, I did, so my job is I design refrigerators. And so I go to see you on your birthday and you will still maybe cooking. It's okay, well, just look around, chill, dinner will soon be ready. So I'm walking around your house, I see this refrigerator I designed at the corner. I look down, it's not plugged. So I'm thinking, why hasn't he plugged my refrigerator? Doesn't he like it? I approach the refrigerator, and as I open the refrigerator, you've nicely placed your iron shirts and your shoes in the compartment of the refrigerator. In fact, you've placed your jewelry nicely in an angle. And by the way, you polish the shoes, so it's shining. Like, I was, I was enjoying Bishop's shoe. And the, the way I look at it is my size. <laughs> it, it, it has been designed for me. <laughs> there is God. You know God has a sense of humor, right? I tell you, he does. So, now, you see these nice shoes and, and, and things nicely placed in the compartment. If you were me, the designer, what would you do? Me, I know what I will do. Yeah, tell us. I will defriend you. <laughs> that is the end of our friendship. Do you know how long it took me to design that refrigerator? Yeah. It took me six days of putting everything in place before designing you yeah. and commanding you to be fruitful and multiply, and yet you put your shoes in my refrigerator. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
Well, that's what you do to the Almighty. Now, hear me now. This is where you get interested. Remember that as long as those shoes and your clothes are in this refrigerator, dust won't come near. So actually, that refrigerator has the function of storage. But its purpose is preservation. So many people have gotten so comfortable in operating in function, but not in purpose. You function. After all, I get paid. There is a reason why function is not what should happen. That is why you don't have time for God. I can assure you, mark my words, by the Holy Spirit, when you are functioning in purpose, you are worshiping God. Amen. It's in purpose that everything is in unison. The Garden of Eden was a place of Adam's work and worship. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yes. It was after the fall, there was a separation. Because now Adam started to toil instead of to tend. Remember, when, 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 when it was a fall, what happened? The Bible said he cursed the ground for Adam's sake. And the ground brought forth thorns and thistles and weed. That means those thorns and thistles were not part of the original creation. So those thorns and thistles were not made on day three. No. No. They, they, they are a post-creation creation. <laughs> you see that, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but the thorns and thistles started interfering with Adam's food. You know, when you have weed, it begins to struggle with the nutrients of the food tree that he made for his son. Remember, he made everything Adam wanted before he put him in the garden. Go back and read it. So Adam wasn't supposed to walk in toil for food because food was there before he came. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. That's when Adam, because now Adam has to keep removing the weed and the thorns, remember? So that he can have access to his food. That's when his job responsibility changed from tending to toiling. The reason you are working like a headless chicken and allocating your mind one hour to God a week and telling yourself it's okay is because you are toiling. Right. Right. When you work in design, you don't toil. Yes, because God has put it in place. Okay, now follow me. I want to show you the spiritual dimension of design. Because the devil, I'm telling you, the devil knows this. Guess what? Guess how he knows? 